Hello chess lovers, Soren here with another fascinating game. In one of my previous videos I published a game played by Jose Raul Capablanca against Keral Treibal, where with a beautiful tactical shot Capablanca managed to break into pieces the Chinese wall and penetrate his opponent's camp. That video actually arose a huge interest and I decided to choose a similar subject and now we will see a Chinese wall. The following game was played between American chess grandmaster Samuel Shankland and Colombian international master Rafael Sosa. The game was played in 2012 at Philadelphia Open. Let's see what happened on the board. Shankland opened up with d4 and Sosa responded with d5, c4, c6 with the Slav defense, knight f3, knight f6 and knight c3 with the three knights variation and a6. From the mid-1970s, various Moldovan masters began to use this system in practice and today this is one of the main opening systems against d4. Here comes c5. This is a pure strategic decision. By pushing forward the c-pawn, white is tapping black's potential pawn advances on the queen side with b5 or c5 and deprives black's kingside pieces of the possibility to develop satisfactorily. That's why black responded with g6 in order to fianchetto his kingside bishop. Meanwhile, we have bishop f4, bishop g7, h3, preventing any bishop g4 jumps, bishop f5, e3, black castles kingside, knight h4, bishop c8, knight f3. Here the players repeated the moves and we have bishop e2, knight d7, white castles kingside, knight e4, and this time we have g4. Yes, looks like the Shankland loves pushing forward his pawns. Knight d2, white is forcing the exchange of knights after which we have f5, bishop g3, bishop f7 and this time we have f4, knight f6, g5. Shankland is also locking up the king's side, knight e4 and we have the exchange of knights on e4. We have a closed position where now we will see a lot of maneuvering by both sides and we will go quickly through all those moves. Shankland is bringing his heavy artillery on the queen side in order to go for a breakthrough. We have the exchange of pawns on b5, queen c8 and b6. After which we have the exchange of rooks on a1 and queen e6. Of course, black can't do anything on the a file. White has total control of that file. White can play rook a7 and then queen a5 and black can't even capture on a7 because in this case white can get a monster on a7. This can be an easy win for white. That's why after rook takes a1, we have queen e6. Black is acquiring a waiting defensive strategy. Meanwhile, Shankland is bringing his king on the left side of the board. Queen a4, queen a1. But still, black's position is very solid and there are no potential winning moves for white. Bishop g7, Queen a4, bishop f8, black is making waiting moves and h6, white is burying black's dark squared bishop and we have it, this beautiful formation which a few days ago we saw in Capablanca's game. Here we have another break in the wall and now let's see how will Shankland manage to break this solid formation. Queen d8, meanwhile we have more maneuvering and Bishop c3. Later this bishop can be very useful on the long diagonal. Bishop d5. Well, if queen d5 then queen a3, white won't give black a chance to penetrate his camp. Bishop d5 was played, bishop d1, bishop e6, queen a4, bishop d5. Black is still waiting and Shankland is hoping that his opponent will make a mistake. Queen a4 and king e8 and this is a move which is a mistake. Instead it was better to play king g8 if bishop c4 then e6. But in our game after queen a4 we have king e8 and now comes bishop c4 and already you can't play e6 because of this bishop a6 move. That's why it was important to place the king on g8 from where it could overprotect the pawn on h7. If b takes a6, then rook takes h7. And once white is getting a passed pawn on h6 square, this is going to be an easy win. Or after bishop c4, if a move like bishop takes c4, then again, this won't give black anything. White will win this endgame. c6 is coming, and then 
Black can't fight against that monster on b6. Let's go back in our game after bishop c4 we have king f7 and bishop b3, king g8 and now you can pause the video and try to find Samuel Shankland's next move. Ready? As in Capablanca's game, it turns out that Black's Achilles heel is this b7 square and Samuel Shankland went for rook takes b7. By the way, even if not king g8, for example, if you play king g8, then again this rook takes b7 works. White can first go for the exchange of light squared bishops and then can sacrifice on b7 and yes, white is winning. In our game after bishop b3 we have king g8 and rook takes b7, rook takes b7 and we have queen takes c6, white is using the fact that the bishop on d5 is pinned, bishop takes b3 and king takes b3, after which, believe it or not, but Rafael Sosa resigned. Now if, for example, rook b8, then queen e6 check is coming and then the dark squared bishop is getting freed and black king is getting checkmated. Let's checkmate black king with a pawn. Or after king takes b3, if move like queen d7, which is both protecting the rook and is covering the e6 square, then in this case white can simply go for the exchange of queens and then play c6 and white pawns are unstoppable. Here white can either go for b7 or bishop a5 is even stronger, this gives black no chance to survive and that's why after king takes b3 we have a resignation. A nice way of penetrating inside the Chinese wall, right? In the end, as usual, would like to sharpen your tactical skills. Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning move for white. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, consider checking them out as well. I will see you in my next video, take care.